Today I'm going to share with you five traits of a true disciple. But first, what is a disciple? I want you to put your definition in the comments below. I'll wait. Go ahead. I'll be right here when you get back. So based on Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19, a disciple is one that is following Christ, being changed by Christ, and is committed to the mission of Christ. You see, when Christ called his first disciples, they may not have understood where Jesus would take them or the impact that it would have on their lives, but they knew what it meant to follow, and they took his call very, very seriously. And they began going everywhere he went, doing everything that he did. Luke 6.40 says that a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Now that's the whole point of being a disciple of Jesus. We imitate him, we carry on his ministry, and we become like him in the process. Not that we become Christ, and not that we become God or little gods, it's that we become like Christ. The church was not designed to be a group of spectators that just attend weekly lectures, but they're supposed to be a trained army with a powerful message who bring that message of Christ to others. Yet somehow, somehow today, many have come to believe that a person can be a Christian without being like Christ. That they can be a, a follower who doesn't follow. Now, how does that make any sense? It doesn't. Now, following Jesus is not about diligently keeping a set of rules or leading good lives. It's about loving God, enjoying Him, and living in obedience to His Word. Jesus said in John chapter 14 that if you love me, keep my commands. So what does a disciple do? What are the characteristics, the traits of a disciple? A disciple has a passion to know, to love, and become like Christ. Paul said to the church at Philippi that I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, and I consider them garbage, so that I may gain Christ, so that I may be found in him. He says that I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and the participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. See, disciples are followers of Jesus that live their life on purpose, and their ministry to others is simply an overflow of the time that's been spent alone with Jesus. It's, it's more than just knowing about God. It's, it's knowing him personally and walking with him daily. This is so important because time spent with Jesus, it, it just causes us to see things differently. Number two, a disciple pursues biblical community. The writer of Hebrews says to let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as is the habit of some. This is an intentional pursuit to seek and create community among other believers and spurring each other to love and good deeds. Jesus said in John chapter 13, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, now listen, by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. The way I see this is that when lost people or new believers or, or anyone for that matter come into the church, they should feel such a, a supernatural divine love from the community of believers and by that love will be drawn into the fellowship, drawn into a relationship with Jesus Christ and into a relationship with others. You see, being a disciple, it's, it's more than sharing the message of Jesus. It's, it's teaching people and demonstrating how to obey the commands of Jesus, which leads to trait number three. A disciple maker advances the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul told Timothy that the things which you have heard me say in the presence of many entrust to reliable men who will be qualified to teach others. You see, what, what Paul is saying is, you take what, what I've shared with you, you teach that to others who will be able to teach that to others. You see, we're not, we're not supposed to be like the Dead Sea where everything just keeps coming in and nothing goes out. In the Dead Sea, all life ceases 
to exist. Jesus says instead you're supposed to be like a river. That, that out of you will flow rivers of living water. We are to be personally involved with, with helping others move closer to Christ. And this can happen in small groups or it can happen one-on-one. -on -one. Number four, a disciple knows and lives the scriptures. Remember, a disciple is a student of the word. Therefore, it's important that we make it a point to read the Bible, to study it, talk about it, and pass it on to others. You see, we understand the truth, and we find the Word of God to be sufficient in guiding us through all aspects of life. Jesus himself has said that if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. And number five, disciple makers spend quality time with those who are without Christ. Paul said to the church at Thessalonica, we, we loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. The Bible tells us about Jesus that he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. I love what one man said. He said that, that a gospel messenger, a disciple who stands detached from his audience has not yet been touched with the very gospel that he proclaims. You see, the gospel creates a community that is characterized by love. In the first church, you, we read that the believers were one in heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions were his own, but they shared everything that they had. There were no needy persons among them. Now, I believe there wasn't just the, the church that had no needy persons among them. I, I believe that it was the entirety of, of the community or the village in which they lived. The disciples, they sold their houses, and, and they brought that money to the apostles' feet, and they distributed as anyone had need. Again, from the life of Christ, we read that, that when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were, they were like sheep without a shepherd. And the Old Testament tells us, now this is, this is harsh, but listen. The Old Testament tells us that when I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you don't speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. That's powerful. That's powerful. You see, one identifying mark of a disciple of Christ is a strong commitment to the great commission of Matthew chapter 28. Not only that, but a strong compassion for the brokenness of those who are without Christ. So my challenge to you is this. What is one trait that you're doing well? And then what is one trait that you need to start working on? And put that in the comments below so that we can all be praying for one another. God bless.